everyone, Sarah here from Happy Hands UK. So this is part B to my um, video of making these. And um, I'm just going to add on to the end of this um, how I did these, some tips and tricks on how I resin and how I get the best results that I possibly can um, when I do resin and the things that I do. Um, and how I constructed these and how I put them together. So stay tuned and here we are. I use this resin, as you know. So for the newcomers to my channel, this is what I use and I get this on Amazon. Um, what I do, um, I know that a lot of people don't like to shake up their resin, but I feel that all the components need to be mixed. Um, to avoid that sticky residue. I think that that's been the issue with me in the past with all the resins. So what I do is I roll like this, I roll the ball to gently mix the resin up. Okay. And another thing that I do what I find with UV resin is that has, as it's curing, it gets really, really hot and the pieces curl up like this and they, they, they tend to bend. So to reduce that, I always leave my pieces stuck to my, um, my tile. Um, this also helps when you're trying to spread out your resin uh, that your pieces don't move about. So it's, it's twofold. A good reason for leaving it on the tile um so all mixed up nice and nice and together so then i will just do the minimal amount that i think that this piece needs to just get it covered And this is to avoid spills. And then I will take some kind of pointy tool and I will just drag out the resin to the edge. And the surface tension will, will grab it back. So if you pull it over the edge slightly, if you've not got too much, it'll just pull back. That's the science of it. It's surface tension. And then you can make sure that you've got it covered right to the edge. Now you know when you've got enough because it, it won't pull back from the edge. And if I just zoom you in on this one. Are we in shot? You can see that it's just slightly pulling back into the center from the edge here. So that's not quite enough that's on the so what I would do then is because it's already spread around, you can just add a little drop or two and it'll self level. And then you know you've got enough. So I'll do that with this one. This one definitely hasn't got enough. And you'll see that it'll want to... Oh, sorry, I forgot I'm zoomed in, aren't I? <laughs> um, you'll see that it'll want to pull away to the from the edge back into the centre. So let me zoom you in on that and you'll be able to see what I mean. really hard to see with the light the way it is. Um, let me just pull you out again. Put 
perhaps use my lights a little bit. So you can see that it's kind of trying to pull away from the edge slightly. But if you want it doming, it's not going to look very good. It's not going to dome. So once you've got the first bit covered, you can then pop in a couple more drops. And this stuff is self-leveling. So it will find its own way to the edges and it will keep even. And then you'll see that it's all on the edges. Now I find with these bigger pieces, these are the ones that will curl up. So I'm not going to do that with these ones. Because the more it's on there, the more likely it is to curl because it will be stronger and it will pull more. So in this case, it would be easier to just do a couple of layers. But just make sure that you do get the whole thing covered. And you could do that for all of them if you don't want a chance putting too much on. They say less is more. Um, you can do it to do two two layers. And you can get your dome effect on the second one. And of course, you still have to be careful that you don't scratch up the pattern because it's just mica and it could very easily wash off. If you were to wipe it with a damp cloth, it would wash off. So you don't want to scratch it with your pointy tool. I've noticed that I've just accidentally done a little spill here. So I'm going to get my little brush and just give that a wipe. And because there wasn't that much on it, it's not flooded and gone everywhere. So that's why it's always better to go less. It's easier to tidy it up. Let's zoom you back out. Uh -huh. So I'm not going to put more on these ones because I want to do the back as well. So I don't want it to dome because if I dome it, like this one's domed, I won't be able to lay it flat to do the back. So it, it really does depend on what your end result is wanting to be on how you use your resin. And then I just like to just kind of go around the edge just to make sure that I've got a nice even finish. And 
you double check it's worth taking the time to do it because if you do miss a little bit it's very noticeable and then it, it makes it uneven so I've just spotted a little hole there that I've not filled in and there might add a little bit more to that because it is a big surface and I do want to make sure that it's completely covered okay and then I want to get my lighter and just pass over the top of the resin and this will pop any bubbles that you might have created when you were mixing up your resin. And they pop quite easily. And also you will notice as well, because you've got a light so close to it, it helps you see any little bits that you might have missed. And I've spotted a little tiny hole here that I need to fill in. And again, I don't feel like it's quite enough on that. So I'm just going to put a little drop on. And it will spread out and it will find its way. And using the lighter also heats it up slightly and it makes it a little bit thinner so it will spread out again. And sometimes it helps also if you leave it for a little bit and then any micro bubbles will then come to the surface. And then can be popped again with the lighter. Also, what can be mistaken for micro bubbles could be dust. So if you've been sanding your piece before resining it, make sure that you've wiped everything, your whole surface down, and your pieces that you've sanded. Give them a good wash. And make sure that there's no dust on it whatsoever, because the dust looks like little micro bubbles and once they're in there you just cannot get them out that's it they're there forever so i am expecting this piece this big one to curl up and bend slightly again i've just been a little bit too rough with the edge there um, which is why I've only done a thin layer and I do want to do the back because then when you turn it over and resin it, it can correct itself a little bit. And also if it's not too thick with resin, you can bend it back into shape also a little bit. Sometimes if you're lucky. <laughs> so then what I do, I pop it under the lamp, but just for 10 seconds. Because in, the, in those first few seconds of curing, the, the resin heats up quite a lot. Um, and this is what causes it to shrink and bend the clay. So I, put it, I always put it on for 10 minutes first. Let it then sit and cool back down for 10 seconds or 15 seconds or so. And then I'll give it another 10 second blast. And this doesn't always stop it, but it does reduce the amount of bend. This is what I've found anyway. And then let it cool again. It's all about a matter of patience, really. And then I will give it its full time which on this is um, 120 seconds. So I'll pause and I'll come back when that's done. Okay, so that's that done now, and I have done these as well. Uh, but what I wanna show you, and I've not got the camera in the stand because I wanna try and show you this little bit that's lifted, if I can, with two hands. Can you see that there? So it's, it's this one. So it's just lifted ever so slightly. But the rest of them have turned out pretty okay. So I'll just pop you back on the stand. So yeah, it's, it's only this one. It's, it's lifted ever so slightly. So now what I tend to do 
I'll take them off the, the tile now. And sometimes um, at this point, if needed, I will tidy up the edges. Because I left them on after cutting, um, I didn't have the opportunity to, to clean any bits of crumbs away. So I would use this opportunity now to take them off and clean them. But they're pretty good actually, they're not too bad. And you can tell with your finger if it feels a little bit rough. Just use a nail file and I'm doing it away from my workspace because I don't want dust everywhere. And I'm just cleaning off the edges just to give it a nice finish. So it's nice and smooth. And then I will be doing it exactly the same but on the back. So I'll do that and I'll come back. Okay, so that's the backs done. So they're now done front and back. These are very thin. They haven't warped too much, thankfully. They're still quite level. But as this, these big ones are a pendant, I do want them to be more substantial. Actually, that one has warped a little tiny bit. The bigger they are, the more chance they are of folding on, on themselves. So what I'm going to do now is add another layer to these bigger ones. These are going to be earrings, so it doesn't really matter so much about them being substantial. These are pendants, so I do want those to be heavier, if you know what I mean. So I'll just pop another layer on these and kind of try and dome them, and then I'll be back, and we'll make them into jewellery. And everything's resined and ready to be constructed into jewellery. Um, I did have a little uh, mishap. Um, I think, um, well, I don't think I know, um, the resin must have had a little overspill here. And when I've tried to lift it off the tile, um, I've accidentally left a piece behind because it's resined to the tile. So this one, although I could probably fix it, I think if I was to try and lift it, I could probably resin it back on. And it wouldn't be that noticeable. But I've also, when I've been uh, putting the resin on, I've caused a little scratch on it. So I'm not going to bother with it. This is one that's gone to the reject, unfortunately. Thankfully, I did two of these ones. <laughs> I must have known psychically <laughs> so right so what we have now is these these are all done and they've all turned out quite nicely and I'm, I'm happy with them so i've dug out some findings and some little um attachments that i want to put on so for the uh, pendants obviously i'm going to put a little pinch bail on those um i will leave a link down below for where i get these from i've ordered some more i get them from from eBay and they're coming from China so this bag is these silver earbags posts and they are 8 mil and you get a hundred in a pack and um, they take a little bit longer to get here you probably have to wait um, maybe two or three weeks I think uh, the last lot I've just ordered a few days ago is coming on the 23rd so probably about two weeks three weeks depending on you know each seller in China but I found that they're really really cheap but they are silver and they do have the little 925 hallmark on the earpiece as well I don't know if you can see that not really but you can see there's something there but that does say 925 and I think uh, I can't remember the price of them but you can choose a pack of 20, a pack of 50, a pack of 100. And the more you buy, the less it costs per item, per piece. So I've ordered, um, I think, 100 of them. So I've got 50 pairs of earrings on the way. <clears throat> and also some more pinch bales, which are also silver. So you get the little hallmark on the top there. It's 
probably not easy to see but hey ho and I like them because they are silver and um, some people do struggle with ear earrings if they're not silver or gold or you know, you know cheap metal um so that's why I do that in case I am at some point going to sell them in the future so anyway enough of that so what I'm going to use um for these ones I am going to construct the earrings in this way so I'll need to put um two holes in the circles one oh no sorry because I'm, I'm using the the post aren't I um so a little hole at the bottom of this one little hole at the top of this one sorry um, so uh, I'll drill here and I'll drill here on these earrings and I'll use a little jump ring then to connect those and then I'm going to put a post on the back and I, I do that, I'll do that first actually, I do that by using resin again. So I will grab my resin which I have just been using so I don't really need to give it much of a roll up to to mix so what I do is I just put a blob I'll just do a couple at a time and what I do then if I'll zoom you in it might be easier might I? so <clears throat> I will drop that on I'm not bothered about placement at the moment because I can shift it once it's done and I will then press that in so it hits the the bottom and then bring the resin over the top which will obviously then grab it and it's not ever going to come off not ever the only way that it'll come off is if the post itself actually breaks which isn't going to happen either unless you stand on it or something and then I will do it as if I'm resining to cover it in the first place so I will just cover the whole thing and that way you get a nice smooth even finish throughout the whole back otherwise you would see where the resin stops I perhaps should have done this before <laughs> And then in the same way, um, get my lighter, whoops, daisies, get my lighter, pop any bubbles, and then I will move it to where I want it to be. So I want it to be more to the top, top centre. And then I will go ahead and cure that. Um, I'll do that and I'll come back. I'll do that and I'll fold and I'll come back. Right, so, so that's those done with the backs on. So as you can see, it's a nice little neat finish for the post to sit on. And that is not going anywhere. It's on there permanently. Um, I have made a little hole in the bottom. So I just basically lined up with the post a couple of mils from the edge and I made a hole there. And I've done the same on the bottom part of it, in the centre and right to the edge. So now all I need to do is join those up with a little jump ring. So for that I'm just going to use a pair of pliers. And I'm just going to open this jump ring up. Now when you open a jump ring up, you, you probably already know. Um, but for the beginners um, out there, um, don't open it this way because then you'll lose that lovely rounded shape. So we open it this way. And then we keep the shape then. And then we can pop on, I'll put this one on first. We'll pop that in there. And then the top bit on. Now I need to make sure that these are gonna be on the same way. So they're both facing, the pattern's facing the front. And we can pop that on. And then you close it in the same way. I use another pair of pliers because it's less fiddly and that it can get right in there and get a grip. And then 
push it together and I like to just grind it so that they touch and there's less of a gap then that they're right close up to each other and line that up so that's that and then what I like to do I like to hide away the little join so I roll it so it goes either to the back or in the top and sometimes I do like to also just add a little blob of resin just to hold it in place and then to finish that off oops, I'm just going to put a little rubber back on and that's the earrings all done and I've done the same with the with the light ones as well so they're done all ready to go and then with the pendants all I'm just going to do is just put a little pinch bale in so I've made a little hole pop a little hole in um, just open up the pinch bale so you can see the writing there I put that to the back and then just squeeze it pinch it closed and then just to be on the safe side I'll just give it a little bit of a squeeze and that's that done now I've been on Amazon and I've bought some um, ready-made up cords this is a pack of 50 um, just to make things a little bit quicker when it comes to assembling um, I suppose it's a little bit of a cheat <laughs> um, but these this is a pack of 50 it's, it's got a few different colors I think there's five of each color so a nice selection of colours. Um, I'll leave the link down below. I don't know whether it was $6.99 or $7.99 for, for $50. Um, the company is uh, CMU Accounting. That's where they've come from. So I've picked out a couple of colours. A couple of cords. And there's this nice khaki green colour, which I think goes really well with that tone of the gold on there so I'm just going to pop it in and hope it'll go through this hole <laughs> if not I'll have to deconstruct and reconstruct but I'm hoping it's not too fiddly to be able to pop it in just bear with me more fingers and thumbs my nails don't help because they're a bit clumpy a bit big right there you go that's gone in Oh, let's see if I can just give it a bit of a tug while it go in. Please go in. Oh, yes. So that saved me. But if it hadn't have gone in, all I'd have done is opened this up, because that's what's, what was um, a little bit large. Open that up, pop it in, and then pop that back on. And just, just deconstruct and reconstruct. So that's that. And then for this one, I've chosen like a, like a gold... A light gold colour so do the same again pop that in just have to be a little bit forceful to get that through the hole just pull it through there we go so there's our pendants and then matching earrings and we're done we're all done so yeah I hope that that was useful to you in the sense of um, getting a nice finish when you're resining your pieces with UV resin um, just a few little handy tips that that I've learned myself along the way and um, just to make it look a little bit better uh, so that's it. I'll take a few photos and I'll pop it on the end. Um, I have made an account with um, a buymeacoffee.com. Um, I, I, I feel kind of awkward about it, but it's been suggested to me. And, you know, things are tough at the minute um, with the economy the way it is. And <clears throat> it is costly to get all the materials. And... Um, I just thought that if you'd like to, the opportunity is there for you to pop over 
and buy me a coffee for it's not very much um i think it's two or three pounds for a coffee um and believe me that honestly there's no obligation i really don't care if i don't get anybody buying me a coffee it's just that every little helps doesn't it um i am not monetized on this channel and i'm a long way off being monetized um <clears throat> but it'll just help um towards getting more videos out more regularly um, if I've got the materials to do it. Anyway, that's that out of the way. Um, if you do buy me a coffee, I'll um, stick your name at the end of my video uh, once a month. Um, that's what I've seen people doing. So if you don't want your name coming up, um, if you do leave me a coffee, just let me know and I'll, I won't put it up. Um, but anyway, it's so awkward. I hate talking about money. <laughs> Um, but there you go. Um, I do hope that you enjoyed this video and um, I'll be back soon with another one. So take care everybody. Bye.